name's Margaret Strout, and we're going to be cooking for your health. Well, not really for your health. We're going to be cooking for fun today. This is going to be a Halloween special. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, and I have to confess, some of these recipes I made one way, but they didn't come out the way I made them, so I kind of had to modify them. This is what I call cow patty bark. We were going to make little um, baths, but it didn't work. So we said it looked like cow patty, so we decided that it was cow patty bark. The recipe for the cow patty bark is a 12 ounce bag of chocolate chips, one cup of crispy rice cereal, half a cup of cherries, half a cup of nuts, I'm going to put this in the microwave and I'm going to melt it. Now, when you melt chocolate, you want to make sure to have it on about 50%. And I'm going to do it for about three minutes and then I'm going to do cook power and I'm going to do 50%. Okay, while I'm doing that, I'm going to make lots of noise by putting some nuts and some dried cherries in a food processor. It's noisy. And I'm going to pulse it. And I want it really, really ground up. Okay, I think that'll work. my chocolate. Whoopsie. I'm going to stir it once. Oh, yep. And put it back in. Have it heat up. Make sure I hit the right button. Now, I want to tell you when I do this, I do it in a jelly roll pan and I stick it in the freezer. If you do it in the freezer, then it gets hard faster. I also have, I bought little gummy worm or uh, frogs and gummy worms so that we can kind of decorate our platter of this stuff. Um, and at the end of the program, when we put stuff together after this is cooled, we're going to put it um, in a pile with little frogs and worms. Now I also have to confess, I do everything but spiders. You can do snakes, you can do bats, you can do anything, but I don't do spiders. And my son is actually cool with that. Let's see. You have to stir your chocolate a couple of times if you're doing it in the microwave. If you do it in a double boiler, it's a little bit faster. Oops. Yes, okay. Now I've microwaved it. I do want to say I put approximately half a cup of the dried cherries and half a cup of the nuts in here. I never remember which way that goes. And a cup of Rice Krispies or crispy rice cereal, whichever you want to do. You just mix this up. And it looks horrible, but it tastes really good. And for Halloween, it should look terrible and taste really good. It takes a little while to mix it up, but you want to coat the cereal and the nuts well. And this is one of those really simple things that you can make. Most of these recipes are fairly simple that we're going to do today. And I believe everything is on the internet, on the website. So I'm going to scrape that off. This is also fun for kids to lick if they want to help you. They can have a reward. It looks horrible. <laughs> Ouch, it's hot. Forgot how hot it gets. And you just kind of have to spread it around and it does spread. 
sometimes you have to take kind of a fork to pull it as well. You don't want perfection. You just want it to spread relatively well. And this is not cooperating with me today. Usually spreads a little bit more easily than this, and I don't know what's going on. I may make double batch, I don't remember. But, well, this is what we have. As Julia Child say, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna stick this in the freezer and let it sit for just a minute. Well, five minutes. And then we will bring it out and break it up and make it look like cow patties. The ingredients for kitty litter cake or kitty box cake is my mother's pumpkin cake, three ounces of cream cheese. You can use low fat. Do not use fat free. Half a cup of butter or margarine, a teaspoon of vanilla, and two cups of powdered sugar. Then you need two one pound bags of white sandwich cookies and some blue food color and some Tootsie Rolls that have been melted and shaped. Alrighty, I use a turkey roaster for my cat litter cake and this is kind of to homage to a, one of my favorite books. If you use a cat litter box please make sure it's new and not um, formerly used. You, it doesn't matter how you frost this. You're just going to put the frosting. on the cake and it's going to be pr fairly liberally done. Some people break up the cake. I don't. And I'm just going to spread this around. And this is cream cheese frosting and this is a recipe that my mother got, gosh, I don't know how long ago. We've eaten it forever. When I use the roasting pan, because it's not made for um, cooking cakes in, I butter and flour the bottom, and I also, because it's so large, I make one and a half of the cake recipes. The next part is when you're making the kitty litter. You take the cookies, and it doesn't matter what brand they are. I usually use two packages. And I'm going to, well, see if I can get these in here good. Whoopsie. Now, I may have well, they're not being very cooperative today, so I'm just going to mash them down there. Doesn't matter. And I'm just going to turn them on. And then I'm going to add some more in there. This is similar to the cakes that they make with worms in the chocolate cookies. I think they're pretty good. Now I'm going to take about half of these out. So if there are any pieces, I'm going to try to leave those in. Let's see. I'm feeling around. I probably should have done this in two batches. But you're going to take about half of it out. And then you're going to put the rest in and you're going to put some blue food color. The blue food color looks like the little um, scent crystals in the kitty litter. There, oops, I got a big piece. Okay, I'm going to add the food color. And I'm using paste food color in here. And I'm just kind of putting some. I don't want to put too, too much. Luckily, I have a piece of cookie here, so I can get it off that way. Sometimes you can use gel food color, but I have found the paste works better. And we're going to pulse it again. It's going to turn blue. See? 
It looks horrible. Now we're going to add this into our others. It doesn't have, hurt to have a little extra frosting in there. And I usually use the fork to mix it up. Now, I don't know if any of you have kitty cats, but this looks like cat litter. Though I'm sure it tastes a lot better. I would hope it does. Okay. Now, we're going to mix this up fairly well. And then what we're going to do, and I find hands are the best for this, I'm going to sprinkle it on the cake and try to spread it out. And then you use Tootsie Rolls that you have melted or softened in the microwave, and you kind of make them into, I don't know if I can say this word on, my, on uh, air, but little turds. There we go. See, it looks disgusting. Now with the pumpkin cake, a friend of mine says it even looks more disgusting. Some people use white cake. Some people use chocolate. I think pumpkin cake just, it's better, it's with the season, and it looks worse. Now I have prefabbed my poopies. Well, let's see if we can get them off without making too much of a mess. And I want to kind of place them part way in the litter. Because that was that's what happens in our cat box. If you do these beforehand, it's probably best to I always put one on the side to make it look like somebody was really in a hurry. And again, this is one of those cakes that looks horrible but tastes really good. I usually buy various sizes of Tootsie Roll and so it can be, but that's what you do. It looks horrible but it tastes really good, I promise. Chris, you will need about eight cups of apples sliced with the peel on still, approximately a third of a cup of butter, three quarters of a cup of whole wheat flour, about a cup of brown sugar, two cups of oatmeal, and then for on top, dried peaches, dried cherries, and pistachios. This is apple crisp. And I'm going to put the flour and the brown sugar in first. I don't measure this very well, to be quite honest. Put the lid on. I like my food processor. And you can use a those things and cut it in or use a knife and or fork and cut it in. I just like putting it in the food processor. Now you want this to be well mixed. Now
Oops. Now I'm going to add about two cups of oatmeal. I prefer the old-fashioned oats. And I'm going to kind of mix this in. If you put the oats in through the food processor, you get oat flour. You don't want oat flour. I'm going to mix in the pistachios and as many of the cherries as I can get in. The cherries are supposed to look kind of like bugs. The peaches, I was going to do apricots, but peaches are larger, so you get more of a worm type thing. And they're good for you. So You can put apple juice in with your apples or just a little bit of water. I don't think this will be the most disgusting thing you will see today. But it's good. It tastes good and it looks good. And if you get desperate, you can just use your hands to mix in that oatmeal. And now you're going to sprinkle that on top of your apples. For the apples, I used Granny Smith. They cook really well. They're not too sweet. And I find it's good to have something, some contrast with this sweet topping. I'm patting it down. And I filled my pan fairly high with the apples, but the apples are going to cook down. Trying to cover my apples. Now, I'm going to put my peaches on in various and sundry little ways. When I bake this, don't want to waste a pistachio. When I bake this, I'm going to cover it with some foil. If you don't, as I tried one day last week, you get really brown worms on top because the peaches have such concentrated sugar because they're dried that they will um, burn more quickly. I'm going to bake this for 35 minutes, or for about half an hour at 350. To make eyeballs, you need lemon gelatin, unflavored gelatin, cream cheese, pineapple juice, truffle molds, and food color. To make them, you heat one cup of water, add one package, the small package of lemon jello, one package of unflavored gelatin, six ounces of pineapple juice, and about four ounces of cream cheese. Pour them in the jelly mold, or the truffle molds. They don't take very long to set. Again, spray the mold with pan coat. I found the easiest way to get them out is to use a old popsicle stick. The truffle molds are really good because they have like a little bumpy thing on the top and that helps you put the iris in the right place. And they set up, and seriously, the easiest way to get them out is this. If you try to do it another way, they, they break. I use paste color on a stencil brush and I just kind of stencil the irises and you can make them all different colors. One year a friend of mine painted red uh, bloody lines on them. I don't have that much ambition. You need to add just a little bit of water to the paste color and these are very effective to gross people out but taste really good which is half the fun of Halloween. The ones we painted today, they ran a little bit, but that just makes them more disgusting looking. Then I use the tip of a paintbrush, or the handle, put a little black food color on it, kind of touch it in the center. I heard an interview in recently, and it was an author who does a lot of books on uh, 
pretty yucky subjects and she says she lets her inner 12 year old boy come out <laughs> and I think that's what I do for Halloween but you can see they're pretty icky looking but boy they taste good the ingredients for rotten deviled eggs is eggs that are hard-boiled a little bit of lemon juice Cajun seasoning some olives and I put in some tomatoes chopped up, mayonnaise, blue food color, and green food color. Now to make them you have to dye the whites and you're just going to toss the whites with a little bit of green food color. Now I will tell you these look horrid. You can use red food color as well, but the green looks pretty bad. And you're going to put them in your little handy deviled egg container. I'll say this show uses more dyed food color than any other program I've ever done. I don't use food color normally. Put that on the side. Wipe up my little green rings. Now, for the mixture with the eggs, I am going to put just a little bit of lemon juice with my mayonnaise and some Cajun seasoning. Now, one kind of Cajun seasoning I got had a lot of salt in it and it made the eggs extremely salty. Depending on how much salt you like, that may be okay. Now, I know this looks disgusting, but it's supposed to. Now, I'm going to mix that up some. I want to get the blue food color mixed in before I add the eggs because I don't want to make I don't want to make the egg mixture too smooth. Okay, I'm going to add my olives and I took black and green olives and little bits of tomato and I'm going to mix this in there. Ooh, that looks yummy, doesn't it? And now I'm going to mix in the egg yolks. And again, I don't want to make this very smooth. I want it chunky. There. See? Doesn't that look yummy? Okay. Now I'm going to put that inside my egg whites. And I'm just going to put a little glop in there. These are kind of different. They have a number of different textures, a number of different flavors. The woman who gave me this recipe was a client I saw in my WIT clinic, or our WIT clinic, and she says she makes her eggs for non-Halloween occasions the same way with occasion seasoning, and everybody always raves about them. And of course, then you're not, you know, doing food color or whatever. But see, they look totally ick. To make gopher guts, you will need one spaghetti squash, cooked and flaked, one package of whole wheat gnocchi, cook it to the package instructions, black olives, sliced mushrooms that are sauteed, a jar of pesto sauce, All right, to make gopher guts, and this is probably one of the most disgusting looking things possible, and it comes from an old song we used to sing at camp, you take a spaghetti squash that you have cooked and kind of made into stringy things, some mushrooms, and I sauteed these mushrooms in the, the fat from the canned pesto, potato gnocchi, and I used the whole wheat olives. I love this kind of thing. It's a, it's a dump. And then you just pour the pesto over it. If it will come out of the jar. It's not coming out. Oh, come on. Now, a friend of mine came over and looked at this and she said, it looks like you haven't cleaned your refrigerator in about six months. Tastes really good. 
And I'm not a fan of spaghetti squash, but this is good. I think anything with pesto is good, though. See? Go for guts. Mmm. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The other entree I'm going to show you is pumpkin chili. Now I have made my own chili recipe and I'm going to take a can of pumpkin and I'm going to mix it in. This adds more nutrients, thickens it up, and mellows it. And it's a way to get vegetables into kids. And it really is good. This is how we always eat chili now. It kind of fits with the season. It's not disgusting, but it sure tastes good. This very last thing I'm going to make is black punch with mucus, which sounds disgusting, but it is the best punch I've ever made. And honestly, I am not good at punch. You take grape food cup or grape Kool-Aid or drink mix, orange drink mix. Get it in there. And then, now I will tell you I cheated a little bit. I put my sugar in the water and made a simple syrup. So it's two cups of sugar with four quarts of water. And I put ice in it. And you can see it's already turning black. It's really fun. Yeah, stir this up a little bit. Doesn't that look horrid? You're going to pour in some ginger ale. And it's about a quart of ginger ale. And then the very last thing, you're going to put in some sherbet. That's the mucus part. I used to freeze this in a brain mold, but I decided it's just as good this way. There you go. Wonderfully disgusting looking. Now I have a few guests for eating and partying, and we're going to have a happy Halloween. Y'all have a happy Halloween as well. Let's eat. Okay. I want some of this stuff.